right, here we go. Another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kudair, local realtor here with Sutton Group Ottawa. And today we are joined with Ashley Max, Seorsa Essentials. I find a lot of the times like we, we want to do this, but there is a lot of sort of internal blockages that are causing us not to move to that higher state. What are some of the ways that you're able to kind of remove those blockages and, and really just kind of guide them towards? Yeah. If you will. Guys, I'm sure it's the light creating the space for them like yeah. i'm the connection and community is the foundation of everything i do in my every day not just my business but my life and when i meet someone for the first time i want to have that soul to soul connection with them and so putting them at ease knowing that many of the clients i work with tell me when they come into the space it's just so calming it's so nurturing that they kind of forget that they had these blocks up and I would say the first step is tuning in to say, is this what is in alignment for me right now? And then taking that aligned action and making that call or sending that email. Um, because of what's on the other side of it is expansion and growth. Like I often say our souls are here on planet Earth at this time to expand and grow. And every moment of every day, that's what you're doing. So some are subtle and some are massive expansions and growth that you're doing and i truly believe that we are at a point in time in in our world and in our society where the consciousness of our planet is elevating and so there are more people talking about this now there are more people openly talking about this i probably wouldn't have been speaking about this five years ago right i feel like we're you know like probably what maybe about a hundred billion humans that ever lived we're probably the luckiest 8 billion that's out there. Right. Yeah. I think we're, we live in a, in a time where it's never been better. Yeah. With everything going on. Yes. Yeah. It's just never been better. We have access to almost everything. Access to technology, access to education, uh, access to opportunities, access to people that can actually guide us and, and bring us where we need to go as well. Mm -hmm. uh, with that being said, a lot of the times, and then the, just again, it's not meant to be argumentative or anything like that. But a lot of times I find the way to healing for me, at least, and then maybe I'm wrong, is to look in internally and then give, you know what I mean? Like that look internally as far as what I'm feeling and how I'm feeling. And then the more I give of myself, whether it's time, whether it's effort, whether it's money, whether whatever it is, it's that act of giving is really for me is the healing I find. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I think everyone is completely unique. And if that is what really feeds your heart and your soul, then that is what's in alignment for you. Yeah. It doesn't matter about anyone else. It only matters about what's in alignment for you. And that looks different for everybody. Yeah. Because I often say we are all on a very different journey. We might, it might be very similar, but for no two people are walking the exact same journey in this life. So for you, if you find healing in that, and you believe, and that feels aligned, then that's your healing. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And as far as, you know, getting sort of yourself where you need to be in a state of healing, mm -hmm. what does that look like? Like to, to prepare yourself for something like that? I think just to come at it from a place of curiosity, having no attachment to the outcome, right? I think what happens is, and that's the ego, when we are like, okay, I want to join, want to start this healing journey and I want to look like this after six months or I want to look like this after 12 months. There's no, in the spiritual world, time doesn't exist. It's only on earth that we measure time in this linear way, right? And so I would suggest that you let go of the outcome, let go of that timelines because there is a defined time for everything. And it's not always in what we have thought up in our logical mind. I mean, we are meant to measure time because it's, when you look at it, it's really the only asset that we have. And we know it's finite. We know that it's it's coming to an end at some point or another. So that's why we, we always measure it in time, I feel. Because just, you know, with that being said, I th think a lot of the times where we're going on a journey, we, we're always looking at the destination. We're not necessarily looking on the learning, the mm -hmm. experience what's happening between now and then, what I've learned between now and then. Uh, and that's immeasurable. Like you can't put a measuring stick on that. It's, it's really just 
how you feel about it at the end is what matters, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's being present, right? When you are on your journey from A to B, it's being in the present moment. And it's all about, it's about the energy. It's not about, you know, what the thing is. So if you're going for the promotion, it's not about getting the promotion. It's about how are you feeling? How, what's, what's that feeling going to give you when you get that promotion? Yeah. And that's because the universe doesn't respond verbally. It has no language except energy. Energy is the universal language. So it's how you're feeling. And that energy is going to emanate out from you. And that's going to create a ripple effect on the consciousness of the planet. So the more that you can emanate out light and love and positivity and kindness, that energy elevates the planet. Yeah. And so the more people that do this, essentially what we're doing is we're raising the consciousness of this planet. And that's a beautiful thing, that we can do that just by being kind. How do you measure being kind? And that's a rough question. I don't think there's a measurement. I think it's it's energy. Everything is energy. And so if you are, it's a smile, it's a gratitude, it's a thank you, it's a appreciation, you know, that holds a high vibrational energy to it. So in your opinion, I mean, you've been doing this for quite some time, you said 2009, 2010, roughly. What's the best way for someone to actually get on that journey and, and really get there and heal? I don't think there's any ending to healing. I think we're constantly on this journey, but just take that step. Like I said earlier, make that phone call, connect with that person, be curious and detach from whatever outcome you think your logical mind mm -hmm. wants from this. And I think outcome and, and ego kind of go hand they in do. hand. It's the ego begging for the outcome, right? At the end of the day, it's the ego wants to see something tangible. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's kind of, I think, where this is going is that like it's always the ego fighting. Right. It's one of the reasons why we probably are always looking at time as a measurement, right? Because the ego wants to see something that you yeah. can touch. Tangible. Okay. And a lot, of a lot of the work that I do is you can't see it. You can't touch it. But it is there. Yeah. And it is energy and it is felt. Exactly. And then this is something to be said about, you know, when you remember nostalgic events or things that happened in the past, you never really remember the details. It's never about the details, never about what was said or what had happened, what came before what. It's it's always about how you felt mm -hmm. in that moment. Yeah. So it goes to show that, you know, energy and feelings is really just all that matters in the healing process Yeah, in a way. Yes. So as far as Ashley's concerned and kind of looking at your future in this business, what does that look like for you? I have no idea. I know it's a loaded question. I know. I have no idea. I just, I follow my guidance. I have surrendered to what that looks like. Many people say, well, what does success look like? What is, and that is very attached to the masculine energy. I don't know. I just continue to tap into my inner guides. I look to them for guidance. They guide me. They give me the steps. And that's why we're sitting here today, right? We went to one networking event. You and I connected. Yeah. I'm sitting here. That's how it works. I'm doing a summer cacao series gatherings in person in the Ottawa area this summer. And um, I wasn't sure. My, my mind was like, oh, I don't know if we're going to do those again this year. And then I got this very distinct guidance like, no, yes, you will do them. Here are the three locations you'll do them. Here are the dates. I get all the images that it, like it's already happened. And so I follow through on those steps. What comes beyond that? I have no idea. They'll, they will just tell me and give me that guidance when it's yeah, and that's the thing. Sometimes you do kind of have to follow your intuition. And just, you know, let it guide you towards the, the light mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. A lot of the times we just tend to make decisions, you know, shooting from the hip in a way. It's okay in some situations, but in a lot of other situations, you really just have to kind of dig in a little bit more and kind of see if it serves the purpose that you're looking for or not. And maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of the times I find People haven't defined that purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's where essentially they go astray. Yeah. Yeah. They go outside themselves and listen to 
they trust what others say and guide instead of themselves. And so I will never tell a client, this is how you're going to feel. This is what's going to happen. This is what you're going to do. I guide them to come to their own conclusions based on their own experiences. And they always do. And they always come to this more expansive place. Um, But yeah, I think what happens is we go outside of ourselves and, and we end up trusting what others are saying more than what our intuition's telling us. And so I think we need to be tapping more internally and less externally um, for our guidance in that. So how do you define, or sorry, not define, how do you kind of relate to this in terms of business and in terms of relationships? And I know they're two different things. So maybe we'll, we'll go through the business aspect of it for first, if that's okay with you. Mm-hmm. Just tell me a little bit more. How do you use this to kind of guide yourself through? Yeah, again, it's um, it's getting those intuitive hits, right? So I have a framework. I'm a very organized individual. So I, I kind of know, you know, what I want. I've got visions of things that haven't come to fruition yet, but I know they will eventually. I just don't know the timeline. So in business, um, it's taken me quite a while to realize that I too was going outside myself, seeking guidance from others, almost like giving my power to them, thinking that they knew better than me. And it wasn't until I decided to wait, no, I received this very strong message that from my spiritual guides at the beginning of the year saying, you have the resources, now utilize them. Mm -hmm. And we do, we each have all of the resources we need to utilize the life that our soul is here to to live out. And so for most people, it would look like taking a complete step back from everything. But to my soul, it is it is aligning. And that looks like getting quiet, going in inward, and then connecting to what is true for me, what is true and aligned for my soul, and what are the aligned action steps that I can take, if any to move forward in what I'm here to do and serve. So it's it's much bigger than a business. Yeah. It comes into like encompassing your endeavor. Yeah, for sure. But that's that works for Ashley. Mm-hmm. Ashley is looking at guiding someone to help them with their business in a way. Mm-hmm. What would that look like as far as, you know, deliver the message from a different aspect? Of yeah, for, for someone's business, mm-hmm. I would say... Um, it's it's very simple. It's just it's tapping into your own intuition yeah. and and what is that telling you is is the way that you're doing business now does that align with you um, or is it aligning with this thought that someone yeah. told you it should be and it's it's tricky right because it's tricky when you're first starting out to discern what is ego what is intuition yeah. because you want your business to be successful you want to be, you know, whatever that looks like, if that's investing in coaches and mentors and marketing and, uh, you know, all of the things. But you also need to say, okay, does this work for me? Does this work for what? what is, who am I here to serve and how am I here to serve? And what is alignment for me for that? No, for sure. Now let's dig back into it again. We got to do this from a relationship standpoint. Mm-hmm. What would that look like? Not for Ashley, because that's personal. We're just going to if you're guiding someone as far as sort of the relationship and using intuition and all of that, what does that look like? Yeah, and I do a lot of this with individuals, especially people who are working in corporate, um, who are, you know, working with colleagues and bosses. And um, and so what that looks like, again, is um, tapping into that intuition, letting go. There's a lot of release that needs to happen mm-hmm. in relationships knowing that I often use this analogy with people um, imagine that you have this hula hoop around you and you can only control what's inside your hula hoop you cannot control anything outside your hula hoop so any of those relationships at like anything that what people think of you what people have said about you how people have made you feel that has not like you can't control that yeah And so a lot of times we try to control these relationships. Well, I want them to see the light. I want them to be more awoke. I want them to, 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 right? And that doesn't happen because, as I said, everyone's walking their own journey. 
So in relationships, the big piece is about letting go of what's outside your hula hoop because what you can control is how you show up, yeah. how you think, and how you act from that place. No, for sure. I think for me, I'd probably take one step further and just knowing how annoying it is to hold the hula hoop, I'd probably just let it go completely. <laughs> It's just, yeah, like, I mean, at the end of the day, it is it is what it is in a relationship. Like, you do have to kind of realize that, look, it's, this is me and this is them. Mm-hmm. I can only control this. Yes. I can only control this. Yes. I can really only control how I feel. Nobody can make me feel a certain way. Yeah. It's, at the end of the day, whatever they say, whatever they do, I have the option to feel that way mm-hmm. or just to brush it off and not feel that way. Yeah. If I can't change them. I'm just going to change them. Yeah. There's no changing. And another, to take it another step, is asking yourself, okay, what lesson am I meant to learn from this relationship? Because everybody that is put in front of you, you are they're there to teach you something, yeah. expand something within you, you know, bring you further along. And so there's always a lesson. So if this person is triggering you or this person, you know, is kind of getting under your skin, like, what is the purpose of this relationship? What is the lesson that you're meant to learn in this moment? And and sometimes like the triggering part is not necessarily that they're triggering you or them specifically triggering you. It's that situation or that unhealed trauma that you have that they're triggering by yes. this action. Yes. So it's technically not them. It's really just more on you to find out what it is that's causing this. Yes. And go back to that root cause and say, oh, well. Wow. This made me feel a certain way. It's really not them. At the end of the day, they're not responsible for my feelings. Yes. I am. Yes. But why did it make me feel this way? Let me dig into it and let me talk to myself about it and figure out, you know, using my intuition, figure out exactly what I need to do to just kind of get over it, move on, let go, and heal yes. in a way. Exactly. What are some of your, and I'm, maybe I'm going to put you on the spot with this one, some of the top books that you've been that you could recommend for folks to start looking into? I am a real big fan of Abraham Hicks because they, they really talk about that whole energetics of getting into that place of that high vibrational energy yeah. because how we feel internally is how we feel perceived externally. Absolutely. And so um, I would have to say of all the books, um, any of the books by Abraham Hicks, uh, I'm a big fan of. Fantastic. We're not necessarily going to be Sponsoring it, <laughs> explaining that, but uh, for folks out there, definitely, exactly. Uh, if that's what you're looking for, Audible has a lot of books Thank that you can look into. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, uh, sorry, I just wanted to kind of go back on one thing. So we, when we met at the uh, coffee, I felt this sort of energy that I just wanted to kind of bring up a little bit. And you know, you you did bring it up. It's just all about the energy exchange, mm-hmm. right? What made you feel like this is the podcast for you? I just your energy. It, it was just very friendly, very open, very down to earth. Um, you know, I've been to a lot of networking events. I really just like the energy and vibe um, in the room. The energy and vibe in the room is accumulation of the individuals that are in the room. Absolutely. Yeah. If I can be real, that was the only, it's the only networking event I've been to this year. I don't go to a lot of networking events, but when I feel called to be at an event, I go and good things always happen. Yeah. it's You have to put yourself out there. It's uh, at the end of the day, like we don't live isolated. Right. Going back to that same sort of yeah. terminology, the lone wolf, yeah. like even the lone wolf needs to procreate. Exactly. Or you know, go out and, and sort of socialize in a way. You can't just be a hermit crab mm-hmm. the whole time. No. Um, networking events are fantastic for that. You know, putting yourself out there in front of people is really good for that. But like you said, you do have to have that energy mm-hmm. of being welcoming and like really putting yourself out there. Ashley, thank you so much for, for this. Thank you for making the time and, and kind of sharing the, the healing energy that you have with the folks out there. And I'd uh, invite the folks out there to, you know, look into your business and see what they can do to uh, help themselves find that intuition in there. Um, and for, for you guys out there, if you uh, like what you see, please don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe so you can get more and more episodes about this and learn more about businesses around the city, city of Ottawa here, and learn that Ottawa is not a boring city. There's so much more. And again, Ashley, thank you so much for joining us and the next episode. Appreciate it.